Hello, welcome to uh, the third video in the series on comic book production. And this video is going to be about the post-production process. In that first video, I could actually bring up the document. We mentioned that post-production is creating the PDFs and the CBR and CBC files, preparing the files for the printer. It also included modifying files, creating credits page, creating a logo, reviewing proofs, and also like scheduling everything out, making sure deadlines are being met. So... We're not going to talk about uh, scheduling stuff. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and we're not going to talk about making a logo. That's up to you. You hire, you know, a, a logo designer to do that. Your letter, you can hire them to do that. Same thing with creating uh, the credits page. That's the same as making any uh, other page of your comic book. Most of the time, a letterer will put that page together. And maybe we'll do a later video about that. What we're going to focus on in this video are these two points, creating the PDF, CBR, and CBZ for digital distribution. So if someone's going to read your, your comic book digitally on, on a computer or an iPad or a phone or something, and preparing the files for a printer if you're going to have them printed and making physical copies. In the next video, we're going to talk about modifying files. Like if the art files themselves are the wrong size or something, and you need to alter them so that it allows you to do these things. So today we're going to imagine that all the files arrived from your art team perfectly exactly to the right size to all the exact specifications. And uh, if you've been following this video series and doing everything uh, from the beginning, then that's the way it should be. So we're going to be doing this in InDesign. Um, like I said, I'm also going to do another video where I'm going to show some free softwares that allow you to do this, but InDesign is really good for this. So I'm going to be pretending that we are using the Kablam size template, mostly because they use some pretty nice round numbers. Um, but of course, this can be done uh, with any printer as long as you have the specifications. So what's important to note here is they give you the full document size, which is the entire width and height of the image. But more importantly is here what they're calling the trim line, which is where they're going to cut the paper. And so what's left on the inside is what's going to be your final image. So that trim area, if you look here, is 6.75 inches by 10.25 inches. Essentially what they're doing is they're adding a one-eighth of an inch border around the whole thing, which is pretty standard. I, I know Print Ninja does the same thing. And so it ends up being an eighth over here, an eighth over here. So that's a quarter inch wider and a quarter inch taller than your finished art. So in InDesign, if we create a new document, first we want to change the units to inches and then change the width and the height to that trim area. So 6.75 by 10.25. Um... If there's any margins, no, there's no, no margins. And then where it says bleed and slug, I don't even know what slug is. You can ignore that. The bleed, we're going to do 0.125 inches. So that is that eighth inch on each side. So then how many pages are we going to do? I'm just going to do one page. Just to be clear, this is the way I like to do it. A few different websites will tell you how to do it. Even websites from the, the printing companies will tell you a different way to do it. This is the way I've always done it, and I actually think it works a little better, and I'll explain why in a second. So I'm going to change to one page. I want to make sure that facing pages is not selected. A lot of people select that. I don't like to do that. So I'm just going to make one page, no facing pages. My bleeds are set. I'm going to hit create. Okay, and there is your page. If I zoom out, it's just one page. That's it. So this white area is your final page, and that border on the outside is the page including the whole bleed area. So you could just drag the artwork in here for a page, but it's actually a lot easier to work with if you use what's called uh, an image frame. So you go over here to this tool, which is the rectangle frame tool, and you should just be able to drag it from one corner to the other and it should snap in place. And just to double check, it looks like it's going all the way to the corners. Good. So now you've got this X here. Now what does this do? That means that if I place an image, which you do via file place or command D in this case, and I'm going to be using some pages from um, that comic that I mentioned in the last video. So I'm going to open this image, and I just need to click anywhere in the frame. And the first thing you'll see is that it is pretty zoomed in. So first off, if I click on the frame somewhere, it'll allow me to expand the size of the frame, or even move the frame around. But you see the image moves with it. So let me undo. If I click this big circle in the middle, now I'm selected the actual image inside, and you can see... The image is actually this big, which is much bigger than the final size, which we knew about. We talked about in the last video how the working artwork size should be bigger than your printing size. It doesn't have to be, but most people like to work that way to preserve a much larger image. So now I can drag the image like this within the frame. I can resize the image if I want, but I don't want to do any of that. So I'm going to undo, put it back where it was. What do I want to do? I want to get this image to fit into this frame. 
So the easiest way to do that is I click it, I go over here to object, and I go to fitting, and I do fill frame proportionally, which has this little shortcut you should probably memorize. And I just click it. Cool, so that looks great now. If I click on the image, you see it fits exactly to the edges because I sized this artwork to be exactly perfect for that kablam size. So you see, I can zoom in and it goes all the way to the edges perfectly. Okay, cool. So my comic is not just one page. I need more pages. So here's how I like to do this. I'm gonna delete the image. I'm not deleting the frame. I'm clicking on the circle, which means I'm selected on the image. I hit delete. So my frame stays exactly where it is. So now if I go to object and fitting, I can go to the frame fitting options and I could set auto fit. And I set it to fill frame proportionally, which was what I did before. Now, if anything drops in there, it automatically sets it to fill frame proportionally. So then what I do is open up this pages panel. I just right click it and I hit duplicate. And there's another one. So if I zoom out over here, you can see there's two now. And then I can select both of those and hit duplicate again. And I get all those and I get to eight. And you can just keep doing that until however many pages your comic is. And don't forget that there's the front cover and then the inside of the front cover. And then your actual story would start on page three. Same for the back. So now, if I go to place, I can select all three of these pages. I hit open. And I just select one at a time. And you can see they all pretty much fit perfectly. If it looks blurry like this, that's InDesign doing that uh, to save memory. You can see it kind of eventually looks a little better. You can go over here to view and do over print preview and then it'll look uh, really sharp and it'll even gray out the area that's gonna be um, cut out. But that will slow down the software, so I usually leave that off. But you can see everything fit perfectly right up to the edges, no problems. And that's great, and you would just do that if, it, if your comic was 20 pages, you could just click one at a time, drop, drop them all the way down. Some people don't like to do it this way, and I think even Print Ninja has suggested you don't do it this way either, even though I've done this and worked with Print Ninja and it's worked out fine, and I'll explain why. What they want you to do is let me start over. I'm gonna create a new document. I'm gonna do the exact same sizes. It kept all my old sizes. The bleed should be exactly the same, correct? I'm gonna select face, facing pages, and then I'm gonna type in eight pages, or however many pages the comic would be. So now if I zoom out, you'll see that it, it lays out more like a book. And this might make sense because that's what comics look like, right? So now let's make that same frame over here. Right? That's where the image is gonna go for the first page. Now let's copy that over to this other page, like page two. I'm gonna line it up right here on the corner, on the bottom. But now notice, it's going past the edge of the other page. So if I was gonna put page three, up here on this side, this one's also going past the edge. So the artworks are actually gonna overlap. Let me show you what happens when I actually do it. Select all three pages. First one there, second one there, third one there. So let me uh, fit them proportionally. You can see that this page is going past the halfway line. If I move it to the side, you can see it overlaps the edge of this page. And if I try to drag it just to the halfway line, now it's uh, hanging out over this edge. You know, so, so if you wanted to do something like this, you'd have to make sure that like every page that's on the left side is uh, sized correctly for this. You have to trim this over here on the right side, which means you're losing that bit of artwork. And now it's like slightly off center actually. You can see that this panel is closer to the edge than this panel is closer to that edge. Whereas up here, you're giving the printer the entirety of your artwork. You're sending them every single pixel of your artwork. And even though like Print Ninja tells you to do it this way, I have done it the way I showed you before where every single page looks like this and they always know what to do. The printers, they print comic books all the time. They deal with all kinds of files. They know where to cut everything for each page properly. Now, just to make sure, every printer will send you what's called at least uh, a digital proof. Let me make that bigger. Digital proof. Uh, a physical proof is when they send you a physical copy of the book and you can you know, hold it in your hands and check it out. Some printers charge money for that, but from what I've seen, they, would, they will all at least send you a digital proof, which is a, just a PDF file, but it'll, it'll show you where their cut lines are, like what the colors are going to look like, etc. So you can double check everything. If, if you get to this page and it looks a little weird, you can you know, talk to them and you know, ask them, how would you like me to do it to make sure it comes out you know, properly. If you look at the way Print Ninja actually prints their pages, this is how they lay out 
like a regular comic book. They use these big sheets of paper, and this is the, the front side of the sheet, and this is the back side. So it's like page one is here, two is here, three is way over here, four is on the back of that. So you can see it's all kind of uh, scrambled around and random. This is what it actually looks like when it's printed. You see it's like a bunch of different pages, and then these have to get folded up and stapled and cut and stuff. So my point is that regardless of what InDesign template or size you use, the pages need to be rearranged and set up for the way that they do their printing. So they're going to be modifying your files anyway. So as long as you're giving them good quality artwork, you know, everything to their specifications, then they should know how to lay out your comic properly. If not, they'll probably email you or something and say, you know, we need the files this way or that way. Okay, so I went ahead and recreated the, the file how I like to do it with all the uh, pages individually like this. Um, I do want to talk about if the, if the pages you're getting are the wrong size, like you type in those numbers that I typed in um, for, you know, the Kablam sizes and your art pages are not that exact size. Well, in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to do this in Photoshop and prepare your files uh, if you do want everything to fit perfectly in InDesign. But I'll show you a quick way to do it in InDesign, which should work most of the time. So I go to place. So I went ahead and made a version of uh, this one page that was a little too tall and a little too wide. So I'm going to do the tall one first. So if I drop it in here... You know, it might look great at first glance, but if I click the actual image, you can see that the image extends beyond the top of the border and beyond the bottom because this one is a little too tall. But it's not the end of the world. Most of it is still in there. The other thing is now I have a choice. I can choose if I want to preserve more of the top or the bottom. So in this case, there's nothing really that interesting going on down here. Whereas up here, uh, you know, there's a street light and some buildings. So maybe I want to drag this down. So now the top of the page is right even with the top of the bleed. The left and the right are perfect, and the bottom extends, you know, well below. And there's nothing, I'm not really losing anything important down here. You know, maybe I don't want that lettering to be so close to the cut line so I could, you know, go up a little bit or something. But I get to choose where I want to position it. What do I want to preserve more, the top or the bottom? So let's do the same thing with a page that's a little wide. I'm going to drop that in here. And again, looks perfect on the surface, but if I click, you see that it's extending beyond the edges. The top and the bottom are fine, but the left and right are not. And it's the same deal where I can kind of decide, do I want to preserve more of the right or the left? You know, maybe this lettering is a little too close to the left, so I want to move everything over to the right a little bit. And I can preserve more of that and cut out more of that. And as you can see, there's nothing really going on on the left and right edges that's that important. So if you were working in this art file, maybe because you were going to use one printer and then because of cost or whatever, you decide, no, I want to use a different printer and this printer wants slightly more narrow pages, you can still work with what you got. All you're doing is losing a little bit off the left and the right and it's not a big deal. The one thing I would not do is just grab this edges and shrink the page because what you're doing there is you're squeezing the page. Now, yes, now everything is within the bounds, but you've just altered the artwork. You've just compressed the artwork. Obviously not that much. It still looks, you know, pretty decent. But you're messing with artwork, and I, I don't like to do that. I would never do that. Same with, with up here. I can get this extra artwork that was too tall, and I could squeeze it upwards. And, you know, it still looks pretty good, but I'm messing with the artwork. I'm altering the art, and I don't want to do that. So I'd rather crop something out and leave everything proportionally the way it's supposed to be. So next I want to talk about what if you have a spread? What if you have a, a two-page spread? When you open up a comic book page, and there's something on the left and the right, and it's one big artwork that takes up the whole thing. The way I've always done this, so let's say you want the spread to be right here. You go to edit and you set custom to the size. We don't want to just double this. We want to work backwards from uh, the full image size. So the full image size is going to be 14 inches, right? Because each one was seven. And then we took out the bleed. So 14 inches minus uh, the quarter inch of bleed, you know, eighth inch on the left, eighth inch on the right is 13.75. And the height stays exactly the same. So there you see, now you have kind of like the double width page. So this image frame here, I can slide it over to the left. Expand it all the way to the right. Make sure it's... Sometimes this ends up like that. And it doesn't actually make it to the bleed. So just always double check that your art is going... That your frame is going all the way to the corners. Okay, so I made a spread page out of one of the art pages. Um, it essentially just looks like, like this. I just uh, duplicated a page and mirrored it. And then I inverted the colors. And just to kind of make it look kind of cool. It doesn't really make sense. But imagine that this is just one big work of art that's supposed to be displayed as a double page spread. So I hit OK. I just click here. I drop it in there. And because I pre-sized this perfectly, you can see it goes all the way to each corner. No extra width or height. So if I zoom out, you can see it's all you know single pages. You get to the double page. Then it goes right back to single pages. So I'm just going to place 
these two pages there, just, just to fill out the book a little bit. So let's just pretend that we have an eight-page comic. I mean, it's essentially three pages, and then the, the, the ones I stretched out spread, and then those first two pages again. So you can double-check it. You can do the overprint preview, like I said. You know, make sure all your bleeds and everything are good. Everything's going all the way to the edge. And then you're ready to export. So first we're going to talk about making a PDF. So we go to File. We go to Export. You want to make sure that uh, it's set to PDF. PDF Print Interactive is if you want to have, like, clickable links within your PDF, which you probably do not. So we're just going to call it Comic, you know, Issue 1. Hit Save. So now here we have a few different options. Under General, you just want to make sure that all the pages are selected, unless you only want to make a PDF out of certain pages, which some people do for, like, a five-page preview. You could just, you know, do, like, one to five or something like that. But for now, we'll just keep it all. I never mess with any of this stuff. Uh, compression is pretty important. So we can ignore the grayscale and the monochrome because we don't have any of that. Uh, we have color images. So what these two numbers here are about is it essentially will lower any images that are above 450 DPI or PPI down to 300. And we want everything to be 300. But what we want to do is change this number to 300 also. We want to make sure that anything above 300 DPI gets lowered to 300 DPI. So if you have anything that's 350 or 400 or anything like that, and you might think, well, I, I, I don't have anything above 300 because I've been working in 300 DPI the whole time. But here's the thing, you actually do. And before you get confused, let me show you an illustrator. So in the last video, we talked about the different DPIs, different sizes, etc. So let's say you have an image like this, right? And let's say this is your, your working size. And let's say this is 300 DPI. Well, now in InDesign, you're making it a little smaller, right? Let's say like that big. The thing is that InDesign does not get rid of any pixels when you make something smaller. It's not removing anything from the image. All it's doing is making it physically smaller. So without trying to get too confusing, imagine that this image here has a bunch of pixels in it and it's 300 pixels per inch. So if I make it smaller and I shrink it down to the size it needs to be, all it's doing is it's compacting those pixels uh, closer together. Essentially, it's making it more dense with pixels. Just to repeat what I said. You started with 300 DPI, while you make it smaller, you're not getting rid of any pixels. So the pixels are essentially just getting closer and closer together, which means your DPI is going up. I'm making the image smaller, but all the pixels are there. So the pixels are just closer together now. So what that means is the file you're working on in InDesign, all of those images could now have like 400 DPI or more. You could do the math to figure out exactly what the final DPI would be, but it's important to know that that's happening in InDesign, and that's why when you when you go to export your PDF, you want to make sure that everything is being downsampled to 300. Because if not, you're going to be sending the printer files that have higher than 300 DPI, which is more than they want, which is not a problem. It's always better to have too many pixels than not enough. But if you want to keep everything to the right numbers, change both of these to 300. Under compression, we want to put none. We want no compression. We want the image to be absolutely full uh, quality. This is for printing. We want no no compression at all. Under marks and bleeds, we want to put use document bleed settings. We want it to include the bleed area, this extra bleed area on the edges. And so it automatically filled in the document settings here. And then under output, um, you can change the color profile. So, so if the files were in CMYK and the printer wants CMYK files, then I would just put no color conversion. If it was RGB and I didn't want to convert them all in Photoshop or anything, stuff I'll talk about in the next video, I could put convert to destination and then I can select uh, the CMYK that the printer wants. wants. And then all this advanced stuff, I never touch any of this. It's like if you want to put a password on the PDF. So then I hit export and this little thing will pop up here and you can see the progress. Okay, cool, that's finished. So there's the, the PDF file. It's 185 megabytes, which is uh, pretty big. Um, this is only eight pages too. So it's pretty normal for a comic that's between you know 20 and 30 pages, like your standard comic book length, uh, to be like about a gigabyte. If I open it up, you can see uh, all the pages are there. You know, double check it, see all the pages are there. That spread appears as one big page, and then it continues. If I zoom in, you can see that it's pretty good quality. I don't know how well it translates to the video. Um, you know, it is a huge file, so the quality is supposed to be pretty good. Cool, so that's the one that we're making for print. So let me actually retitle that. That's the print version. So now we want to make a, a PDF for, for digital comics. So the process is pretty much the same. I go to export. I'm going to call this one Comic01 Digital. And I get to this page. So now the first thing we do is go to compression. We're not changing these DPI numbers, but we are going to add this... Uh, 
JPEG compression. I, I've never used the zip one. I, I don't know if there's a benefit. I've always just hit automatic JPEG. And then you have an option for image quality. Now this you can kind of mess with. Um, it will just essentially make slightly better image quality, with, but it'll also make your file size bigger. So you don't want your file to be too big because then it's annoying to download and stuff, but you also want it to be good quality. So you can kind of mess with those. I would at least stick to medium and um, experiment with these three. Here's something about the bleed settings. You want to uncheck use document bleed settings. You don't want to include any bleed. You want it to be at zero, which means that it's, it's going to cut it at this line here for you. So let me close out of this just to explain it a little better. The digital file is going to get cut right around this line. Now, if you go back to what we were doing before, when we first placed the image, you could argue, you know, why use a bleed area and all this? Why don't you just make the document file, you know, the full size, which was seven inches by uh, ten and a half. Why don't you just make a seven by ten and a half inch file, drop the file there, and then send it to the printers. They know where to cut it. Why do I need all this stuff? Well, the reason I like to do it in InDesign is not only so you can see the little, you know, the little cutoff line, is that when you do a digital copy, this is just my personal belief, I think that because the print copy is going to get cut on these lines, I think the print and the digital copy should match. So when I make a digital copy, I like the digital copy to cut on these lines as well, just like the printed one will. Because if not, what's happening is your digital copy is getting a little extra art on the left, right, top, and bottom. And you might think, well, that's fine, it's not a big deal, you know, like... You know, what's getting cut off here? The edge of this painting frame? Like, who cares? But, I don't know, I just think that the digital and the print should just match as much as possible. So, by including the bleed settings, I can tell the software, when you make a print PDF, give me the whole thing. When you make a digital PDF, cut it off here. So back to the export settings. I go to Marks and Bleed, I make sure it's off, and it's set to zero, so it's going to cut it for me. And then output. So now, if I'm making a digital PDF, I want it to be an RGB because digital PDFs are, be, are meant to be read on a screen and screens use RGB color. So what I'm going to do is set convert to destination and find an RGB. So if I scroll down, this is the RGB that I see most often, this sRGB, IEC, whatever. Actually, if I scroll to the top, the document RGB and the working RGB, which is the defaults for InDesign, are that same sRGB, IEC thing. So I could just select that, include the destination profile, and everything else is the same. So just to double check, the compression, 300, it's on JPEG and medium. The bleeds are good. Cool. So I'm going to export. Again, I can check it right here. Cool. So there's my PDF. It's a lot smaller, only three megabytes versus 185. I can open it up. And as somebody's reading through it, everything looks good. When they get to that spread, you know, it looks nice and big. It's both pages. It's not cut off. I've actually seen uh, comics that I've downloaded, even from like Image and big publishers, where they will split up a spread into individual pages. So you'll see half of the spread here and then the other half of the spread here. It's kind of annoying. But if you do it this way, you know, people will get the full experience and get to see the full spread. And just to show you really quick, if you remember the full art, you could see the edge of that painting frame. Now it, on this digital copy, it's cut off. So this is more like what the printed copy is going to look like. In the printed copy, there should be a cut right about the same place. So really quick, just to show you the difference, I'm going to do that same thing again, but I'm just going to do a large one. So under compression, I'm going to do maximum. Everything else is going to stay exactly the same. And I'm going to hit export. And now if I go to that one, you can see it's 9.7 megabytes, a good amount larger. But I just want to show you, if I open them both up, so here I've laid uh, the large one directly above the normal one, and I'm just going to kind of toggle back and forth. And I don't know if you could tell from with the video, but they look very similar. I'm, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and toggle back and forth. And, you know, they're very similar. Like, I can kind of barely tell the difference. If I zoom in a lot, now I can start to see some, like, compression lines, little dots, little artifacts in the smaller one. Let me, like, oh, there we go. A diagonal line usually can help you tell the difference. Yeah, so the smaller one, I, can, I mean, I don't know if this comes through in the video, but I can see little artifacts across this diagonal line, whereas in the large one, they're not there. But again, this is super zoomed in. Most people are reading a comic book, you know, at this size, if not smaller, you know, maybe on an iPad. I know people read comics on their phone. So my point is, um, you could save some file size and still get a really good looking PDF. But you know, you can mess with those different sizes and, and choose for yourself. So the next thing is, what if you want to make a, a CBR file or a CBZ file? Uh, CBR 
or CBZ. In this day and age, I see a lot of people just, just sending out PDFs. Everybody's fine reading a PDF. The comic book reading apps that I've seen like on tablets and phones and stuff, they can all read PDFs perfectly fine. So you don't need to make these. But if you did want to, essentially, this is just a, a comic book RAR file, like an RAR file. And this is a comic book zip file, which you're probably familiar with zip and RAR files. So what it means is it's just a folder with a bunch of JPEGs in it. And then it gets zipped up into a, a zip file. And the same with a RAR file. So I'll show you how to do that. So when I hit export here, I'm going to select JPEG. And then I'm going to just make a new folder with my JPEGs. And I'm just going to call it comic issue 01. And I'm just going to leave an underscore like that. And you'll see why in a second. And so which pages? I want all the pages. Here again, you can mess with the quality, high, medium, low. You'll get different file sizes. I would leave the PPI to 300. You want it to be RGB because this is for digital. Embed the color profile and you want to uncheck use document bleed settings because you want it to cut off the edge. And then you just export. And if I go over to that folder, you'll see it start making the JPEGs. It doesn't add a page one to that first one. Uh, in fact, I would probably use like a renaming software. I have one to automatically add a zero before these. So it'd be zero one zero two zero three. Just because when you get into double digits, it can get a little confusing with the page order. And it's actually very important that the pages are very uh, clearly numbered so that when you make the CBR file, it automatically knows what order the pages should be in. So if, uh, you know, if I open any of these, you can see they're just images. They look pretty good. This is that spread, which is that big size. Looks good as well. Cool. So now I have all the JPEGs, which, which could be useful. You might just want to have a bunch of JPEGs of your pages for uh, maybe promotional purposes or something like that. But if you want to do the CBR and the CBZ, Here's the thing. I've had trouble doing this with a Mac computer. They always work perfectly on my Mac, and they actually work good on most apps, on most iPad apps. But I have found that sometimes on Windows computers and some like Droid apps, it doesn't open it. Um, I don't know why this is, but if you do the same exact process that I'm describing on a Windows computer, I've done that and seen that then those CBR and CBZ files work everywhere. Like they, for some reason on a Windows, they just work perfectly on a Mac. They don't, maybe it's the software that I'm using to create the zip files and the RAR files. I don't know, but I would definitely test everything out um, before you distribute it, you know, out into the world. So what you do is you essentially just grab these files on a Mac. You can just do the compress feature and it makes a zip file, right? So I'm just going to call it comic01. And then I rename it. I just erase the zip and I put CBZ. And then it's going to ask me, do I want to change the extension? I just, yes, I put yes, use CBZ. And now I have a CBZ file. If I double click this, you'll see it opens up my comic book app. And there you go. Now I can, I can read my comic book like this, go through, it gets to my spread. Everything looks good. So the CBZ file works great with this comic book reader app I have. It's a really basic comic book reader. It should work with a lot of other apps as well. Um, then how do you make a CBR file for that? It, like I said, it's a, it's a RAR file instead of a zip. On Mac, I have this software called Simply RAR. I don't know, some free RAR making software. And you would just drag the JPEGs in here. You do create RAR. I'm going to call it comic01. So that's complete. And then we have a RAR file. So what I'm going to do is erase the RAR and put CBR. It's going to ask me, do I want to change the name? I hit yes. And there you go. Now you have a CBR file. So if I double click that CBR file, it automatically opens my comic book app. All those pages are there. I have the spread. And then again, there it is there. Everything works. So like I said, I would double check these files with different comic book readers. You should probably also double check uh, your PDFs with different readers, but I've never had any problems with the PDFs from InDesign. So that's it. That's how, so that's how you export all your digital and print files for a comic book. I'm going to do another video pretty much doing the exact same stuff, but with a free software just in case you don't want to use InDesign and you want to use something that's free and open source. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you at the next one.